So in this video we're looking at doing the slip stitch design that is in the block and texture jumper. So this is knit doubled up in the retreat yarn, so it's knit on 12mm needles rather than how it would usually be knit on 6.5mm needles. So it just creates a lovely thick, cosy fabric. So it's a very simple design, it starts with a one by one rib at the bottom, which then goes into a stocking stitch in our main colour. And then we're going to work onto our texture part of the design in the slip stitch. So our contrast slip stitch design starts at the armholes, so it just makes it really easy for when you're sewing those in afterwards. So for today's video we're focusing on this slip stitch design. So we start this with knitting two rows in stocking stitch. So then we work two rows of our slip stitch design. So for slip stitch we're changing colour into the black and we're just doing two rows where you're going to Slip, a, slip two stitches, knit two stitches. So you're going to slip two and then knit two. And you're going to work the same back, knitting the same stitches and slipping the same two stitches back. You then work another two rows of stocking stitch, just in the white. And then we work another two rows of the garter slip stitch. But in this one we're kind of working the opposite way, so you're getting the variegated look. So it's working to where you slipped beforehand. So then we just have one slip stitch either side of the row which will then get sewn into our armholes. So for the back of the jumper that is just worked straight up and then for the front we've just got our shaping either side for the neck. So here I'm going to be teaching you how to learn the slip stitch design. So I've worked a little sample just here. We've got a few rows of one by one rib at the bottom and then we go into stocking stitch. This is in our main colour, which for this one is done in our beautiful new green, which is called Purpose. Then we work into Pure and Reflect as our contrast colours to create the slip stitch design. So there's two rows which is just knitted in the stocking stitch, and then we've got our two garter slip rows. Another two rows stocking stitch, then another two rows of the garter slip rows. So it was an eight row repeat altogether. So I've worked the first eight rows and then I've just worked another two rows of the stocking stitch for us. So now we're gonna go on to do our first row of our slip stitch design. So that is this row here. So we're working in the black now. So I'll just grab that from the black of my work. So to start this, we just want to slip the first stitch. So we remember the first stitch and the end stitch, we're always just slipping that stitch. So when you sew it together, you've got a nice line going up for when you're sewing your armhole in. So whenever we slip a stitch, we always want to slip it purlwise. Reason we do this is if we slip it knitwise, it just kind of twists the stitch slightly. So if we slip it purlwise, it just keeps it in the same direction. So just kind of remember, whenever we're slipping a stitch, slip it purlwise. So we've slipped our first stitch, then we're going to go in and we're going to knit two next stitches in black. So knit one, knit another one. So we've knitted two in the black. So we've done a slip stitch and then we've done two knit stitches. So then we're slipping the next two stitches. So remember purlwise, we're going to slip one stitch, slip two stitches. Now we're going to go again and knit the next two stitches in the black. So. so when you're doing this, just make sure not to pull too hard. You'll get a little loop at the back. So we just want the loop not to be too tight at the back because it'll just ruche the knitting slightly. So it's going to keep it quite nice and loose. Knit two. So we've knitted another two stitches and then we're going to go and slip two again. Remembering to go purlwise. Then we're going to go knit two again. And then just work this to the end of the row. And after you've knit two, you should have one stitch at the end, which you then just want to slip. But also, if you want, you can just leave it on the needle and then just turn it because you're not going to be working it anyways. So it's completely up to you. So just turn our work. And now we're going to work on the wrong side row. So you should have slipped the first stitch or you might have left it on the needle like I have done just here. So our black's on the front of the work rather than at the back. 
So the back's a little bit different to how we do it. So we've got our black, take it to the back of the work so then we can knit. So then we're knitting the next two stitches. So you can see here on the back of the work you've got the little loops forming. So that's from when you've gone and slipped the two stitches. So to do this for the back of the work is once we've knit our two stitches we want to bring the yarn to the front of the work again. So then we're going to slip the two stitches. Once we've done this then you want to put it at black and put it back to the back of the work. So you're creating that loop on the wrong side. So you're making sure the front doesn't have any loops on it which we don't want. So once we've looked the back, we're gonna knit the next two stitches. Then we're gonna bring the yarn front of the work, slip two stitches, then yarn back to the back of the work. Knit two, then yarn to the front of the work, slip two, back to the back of the work, knit two stitches. And then we've got our last slip stitch on the end. We send the yarn back, to the front of the work and then slip our last stitch. Just pull that so it's nice and tight and that is our first two rows of our garter slip stitch done. So you just want to pull the stitches so they're nice and tight like so. So next we're just going to go on to do the two rows of stocking stitch in the white. So I'm just going to work that now so I'll just grab my white. So we're just going to knit all the way across to the end of the row. So now we have knitted across the whole row in our white yarn. So we're just going to turn our work and then we just want to do a purl row back. We're just going to purl all the way to the end of the row. So that is our two rows of stocking stitch done. So then we're going our next two rows of our garter slip stitch. So this one's slightly different as we're working it in the sections that we slipped before. So it just creates our variegated pattern. So for the first bit, so instead of slipping one stitch, we're going to slip the first three stitches. So I was slipping pearlwise, slip one, two, then three. It's quite nice to do because you can see where we're about to work with the next stitches from the row before. So we can pick up the black from the back of the work. So don't pull too tightly so it doesn't ruche up. Then we're just going to knit the next two stitches. Knit two. Then I go again and just slip the next two stitches. Then knit two. Slip two. Knit two. Now this time at the end of the work we've got three stitches this time. So just like at the beginning of the work we've got our three stitches. So we're not actually going to be working these. So we can either slip them and then turn or you can just leave them on the needle and then turn the work. So now we're on the back of the work. So we've got the three stitches that we've left or slip the first three stitches. So the black should be at the front of the work. So first we want to do, take it to the back of the work, knit the next two stitches. Then bring the black, bring to the front of the work, slip the next two stitches. Bring the black, back of the work, just making sure our loops are alongside of the work, then knit in the next two stitches, back to the front of the work, slip two, yarn to the back of the work, knit two. 
and then we should have three stitches at the end so we want to bring our yarn to the front and just slip our last three stitches so that is our eight row repeat done so you'll just want to carry on working that all the way up and we get our lovely kind of striped variegated texture design